What is NASA discovered on Mars? What impact will NASA's discovery have on Musk's plans? Stick to the video as we investigate how NASA has discovered a monumental discovery on Mars that will change everything. They're talking about Musk ideas. Great minds think alike which is why the best minds at NASA and SpaceX are working toward the same goal, landing humans on Mars. However, the magnitude and timelines on which the two entities are working differ. NASA wants to send a couple of astronauts to Mars in the 2030s, whereas Musk would rather dispatch much more people off to the Red Planet, if possible, tomorrow. However, Musk should be paying attention to recent findings made by NASA on Mars because they directly affect his plans. Mars is an interesting planet, and NASA has made enormous efforts to study it over the years. The Space Agency has sent a total of five rovers to Mars, including Sojourners, Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, and Perseverance. This has broadened our knowledge of the planet, but the more sophisticated NASA's rovers have become, the more it becomes clear that there is a lot more to learn about the planet. Of the five rovers, only two NASA rovers remain active curiosity and perseverance. China has one rover too, named Zhurong. Nasser Doe cannot send a human to Mars. This is because it doesn't have all the answers to the issues astronauts will face on the planet, including high levels of radiation, gravity problems, but long travel time to get there many more. And it doesn't even have the technology to bring them back home yet. However, rovers allow NASA to explore Mars at a relatively lower cost and risk to humans. Curiosity arrived on Mars in 2012 as part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory MSL mission. The rover still holds the record for the largest rover ever built in in terms of size or pictures that may make it appear small. Curiosity is 10 feet or 3 meters long, 7 feet or 2.2 meters tall and 2.7 meters or 9 feet wide. It is similarly proportioned to an SUV. Since 2012, Curiosity has been traversing the terrain of Mars. It has covered more than 16.8 miles or 27.4 kilometers. It speeds up to 100 feet per hour. But of course, it is not always moving. Unlike its predecessors that were kitted out with solar panels, Curiosity is equipped. The rover can also take fabulous selfies. The main aspect of Curiosity's mission on Mars is to help determine if the planet ever supported life in the form of microbial life. In that regard, Curiosity has been delivering witty discoveries that are shaping how scientists view the red planet. The surface of Mars may be too harsh for life now, but scientists suspect that billions of years ago, the planet had a climate similar to Earth's that was a thicker atmosphere and an abundance of liquid water flowing into rivers and seas. Liquid water is crucial for life, as we understand it. Some scientists think Martian life could have been sustained by substances such as organic carbon. So how is Curiosity beeping us in searching for evidence of life on Mars? While carbon is critical to life as far as we know, so any time we detect a strong carbon signature somewhere like Mars, it could point to biological activity. Carbon is everywhere. You can find life, however. There are different kinds of carbon. Carbon atoms have six protons, but the number of neutrons can vary. We refer to carbon atoms with different numbers of neutrons as isotopes of all carbon types. Three isotopes occur naturally C12, C13, and C14. The first two are stable, but C4 is a radionuclide. C12 has six neutrons, C13 has seven neutrons, and C14 boasts 8 neutrons. C12 is the most common carbon isotope in life. It is in photosynthesis, or metabolizing food. The reason is that C12 has one fewer neutron than C13, meaning that when it bonds with other atoms and molecules, it makes fewer connections than C13 does the same situation. But why are we talking about carbon isotopes? That is because of the discovery made in the Gale Crater. The Gale Crater is found on Mars, and that is a place where Curiosity has been active since 2012. Scientists say that the sediment was formed through the physical and chemical weathering of volcanic rocks before settling at the bottom of the lake. And there are other reasons for scientists to look at the Gale Crater for signs of life, for example. The location is found to contain chemical energy sources. 
Lower said that he and other elements apart from carbon, including oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. The rover has drilled into rocks in the crater to extract a pulverized sample, which had deposits in its onboard chemistry laboratory. The lab is known as Sample Analysis of Mars. So what happens inside, Sam? This is where Curiosity employs paralysis to break the sample and convert it into methane. The paralysis is done in a flow of inner helium to prevent any contamination in the process. Then it studies the gas with a tunable laser spectrometer to find out which of the carbon isotopes are present in the methane. The team behind Curiosity studied 24 rock samples, discovered something huge. Six of the samples contained increased ratios of C12 to C13. They used the C12 and C13 ratios found on Earth as a basis for comparison. Realized that the sample from the Gale Crater contained more than 70 parts per thousand more. C12 on Earth at 98.9. 3% of the carbon is. C12 and C13 form the remaining 1.207%. But what does this mean? Simply, if these results were obtained on Earth, they would signal that a biological process produced the abundance of C12. This is why the discovery was exciting. This is how it works on Earth. In the distant past, surface bacteria produce methane as a byproduct. These are known as methanogens, and they are prokaryotes from the archaea domain. You can still find methanogens on Earth today in anoxic wetlands and dig the digested tracts of ruminants and in extreme environments like hot springs. These bacteria produce methane that eventually ends up in the atmosphere where it reacts or interacts with ultraviolet light. But the product of these interactions is more complex molecules that would rain down onto the Earth's surface. Once on the Earth's surface, they are preserved in rocks along with their carbon signatures. It is tantalizing to assume the same process took place on Mars, which would neatly explain Curiosity's finding in the Gale Crater. Some scientists, however, have other explanations for the finding by the Curiosity rover in the Gale Crater. One of them is the molecular cloud hypothesis. The idea is that the solar system passed through a molecular cloud hundreds of millions of years ago. The event is very rare, but there is evidence that it happens about one time in 100 million years. Molecular clouds are mostly made up of molecular hydrogen, but the one that we are talking about may have had a higher concentration of the type of carbon discovered by Curiosity in Gale Crater. Mars would have cooled down significantly as a result of this cloud and together with glaciation, would not have allowed the molecular cloud to mix with the rest of the carbon on Mars, would only result in the level of C12 increasing. However, the molecular cloud hypothesis remains highly unlikely, even though it is worth looking into. The second explanation involves ultraviolet light. Mars' atmosphere contains over 95% carbon dioxide, and this theory says the carbon dioxide interacted with UV light to produce new carbon-containing molecules, which would have ended up on Mars as surface via rain and be infused in rocks. You will probably note the similarity between this process and the methane agenic one. The difference is that one is completely a one-way scientists are trying to establish which of the three theories is correct is by studying the carbon cycle of the red planet. But Curiosity will continue to study rock samples and measure the carbon isotopes. And scientists will one day get a better chance to analyze the rocks of Mars and the samples collected by NASA's other rover Perseverance arrive on Earth. Whatever ends up being the source of the carbon isotope found by Curiosity, Musk would be personally invested in the outcome. Sure, Musk likes science, but he's interested in other reasons. He plans to colonize Mars. Musk's ambition is to see humans living permanently on Mars. He's getting ready to ship up to 1 million people to Mars, where they will start a new life. The Mars colonization is the main motive for the new Starship rocket that Musk is leading the development of the two-stage rocket has many features that will help Musk achieve his ambition. For example, it is completely reusable, which will greatly reduce the cost of launching humans and cargo into space. Cost is crucial here, because many tons of supplies have to be transported from Earth to Mars. The Starship also uses fuel that is theoretically possible to produce on Mars, which will ensure there is enough fuel to send the Starship back to Earth. Musk is pushing this SpaceX crew to work around the clock to complete the Starship, 
which is necessary if he will meet his goal of sending the first set of humans to Mars by the middle of the decade. He plans to raise funds for the effort from SpaceX, his satellite internet styling business. However, Mars is very harsh to colonize to survive on the planet. Musk has to do something to terraform the planet. The idea is to make Mars as habitable as the Earth almost. One of the main things that are lacking on Mars and is a problem for humans is a protective atmosphere. But Musk has come up with an idea that we admit is crazy. Nuking the poles, Musk theorizes that blasting both poles of Mars with nuclear missiles will create artificial suns that will warm the planet, producing an atmosphere like the Earth's. Musk had a picture of Mars after terraforming placed in the lobby of the SpaceX facility in Texas. When this happens, the only apparatus humans will need to survive on Mars, it would be breathing machines. Let's hear what you think of humans living on Mars. The comment section is below.